Hi, I'm Miko and welcome to my channel. When you move to a new country, it might take you a little while to adjust. Some simple things that you might take for granted could be completely different somewhere else. You might end up having to change some habits of a lifetime, or you might not even be aware of these differences. In this video, I'm going to tell you 12 everyday differences between the West and China. One of the main differences that you will note here in China is that a lot of the public toilets are squat toilets. You may not be used to this back home. It can take you a little while to adjust and find that perfect stance, but now that I have, I actually prefer them, especially in public restrooms. You'll be happy to know that most renovated apartments actually have Western style toilets, so you don't have to squat all the time. But on the bright side, you'll be more flexible and your butt will look great. Whilst we're on the topic of toilets, this one is super important. I've mentioned it before, but always carry toilet roll with you. Assume that there is no toilet roll in any toilet, so at least you'll be safe. I've also noticed that there's not always soap, so it's always handy to carry toilet roll and some anti-bac. Don't put your tissues or your toilet paper down the toilet. The sewage systems cannot handle it here. That's why there's bins in all the restrooms. This also applies to your home toilet. If you do, then it could be a very expensive trip to get the plumber out to unblock your toilet. In the UK, if I'm thirsty, then I can just go to my tap and get a drink of water. But in China, you cannot drink the tap water. This is why in a lot of places, they serve you hot water and whilst most people drink hot water, because once you boil it, it tends to be okay. Now, bottled water is quite cheap here, so obviously that's a great option. but that's not the best for the environment. So there are a few different things that you can do, especially in your home. You can either get like a big bottle delivered to your door, which will save on bottles from the environment, or you could use a water filter. So you can get one for your tap, or you can get like a water filter jug. So what we do is we boil our water and then we put it through the water filter jug. This is cheaper and it's pretty easy. We also have a water filter for our shower because here in Beijing, the water can be quite hard and irritate your skin. So this certainly helps. In China, people seem to go from paying with cash to paying with their phones, completely skipping the credit card era. This is very different from in the West where we use cards to pay for things all the time. Now, people still have bank cards here, but they don't really use them to pay for everyday things. Now, if you're going to move here, then that's okay because eventually you'll get a Chinese bank account and you'll be able to pay for your, with your phone too. But if you're only coming to visit as a tourist, then there's a bit of a problem. Now, if you're staying in a hotel which accepts foreigners, then they should accept a foreign card. But for everyday things like going out for a meal, don't expect to pay with your card. Make sure you get cash out. Like I just mentioned, most people don't pay with cash, they pay with their phone using an app like WeChat or Alipay. Now, I know that this happens in other countries too, but it doesn't seem to have taken off quite as rapidly as it has in China. Like, everyone pays with their phone. I never realized how convenient this is. Just remember though, make sure you have enough battery on your phone. Now, I don't know what it's like everywhere in the world, but in the UK, when you're getting cash out for an ATM or a cash machine, you get your card and then you get the cash. So you don't forget your card. But here in China, you get your cash and then you get your card. So you're so happy that you got your cash, you're trying to put your money away, that you might forget your card and leave it in the machine. Now, I've heard this happen to a lot of people and I've nearly done it myself. It's like, woohoo, cash, see ya. Just make sure you remember to get your card out of the machine. If you're moving to a new apartment, then don't expect it to come with an oven. A lot of places here in China just don't have an oven. If it does, then amazing, snap it up straight away. But it probably won't, as a lot of Asian cooking is just done on hobs, so there's no need. Don't fret though, I feel your pain. It's very easy to get a tabletop oven from lots of places here in China, and cheap as well. I love to cook, so for me, it was a no-brainer, because sometimes there's some home comforts that only an oven can provide. Usually when you go out for a meal in the West, when you've ordered your meals, when they're ready, they'll all come at the same time so you can eat together. Well, not here in China. If you go to a restaurant here, then usually people are sharing, so they order lots of little dishes. So when they're ready, they're ready, and that's when they come out. 
this is fine if you're in a group and if you're sharing because you know you can pick at different things throughout the meal just remember what you've ordered so you don't waste the best thing if it comes out last unfortunately however if you've gone to a western restaurant then sometimes this can happen as well so if there's only two of you one of your meals might come out you might be completely finished before the other person has even got it my advice would be to try and share things here as well because sharing is caring you might notice that in some Chinese restaurants, when you're given the menu, then the waiter or waitress will just hang around at your table waiting for you to order. Now, I personally find this a little bit uncomfortable because some of these menus are so long, but that's just what they do. So they'll either get bored and walk away or you'll be ready to order. Either way, it's a win-win situation. Another thing you'll notice when you go out for meals here in China, which is different to the West, is there isn't really much of a tipping culture and a lot of people don't tip. Now, if you go on a tour, if you go somewhere with other foreigners, then sometimes it's more accepted and encouraged, but generally people don't tip here, so it's a great way to save some pennies. One thing that you might notice is that China is big on security, which might feel a little bit strange. Now, it's not to the degree of like airport security, but in a lot of places, you do have to scan your bag and yourself to get in. Now, this happens in train stations, metro stations, buildings, um, like tourist sites. So for instance, if you go to the Forbidden City or like Olympic Park, or you're trying to get in a gallery or the visa office, these all have security where you have to put your bags in and go through yourself. Now, I mean, this is really great because it makes everywhere really safe, but it's also a little bit annoying if you're in a bit of a rush. But it also makes you realize just like how much lax on security that other countries seem to be. There are obviously loads of differences between China and the West, but these everyday ones seem to be the ones that people find the most different. Leave me a comment below and let me know what you find different between China and the West. I hope you liked this video and I hope you found it useful. If you did, then give it a big thumbs up. And also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more China-related content. I'll see you next time.